Okay, let's talk about the AEPA exam, and there's many AEPA exams. If you're watching this video, um, I'm assuming that you are a, a teacher or educator in Arizona, and you very well know that the AEPA is Arizona Educator Proficiency Assessment. I'm pretty, uh, pretty much sure that I got that acronym correct. But specifically, what I want to talk about uh, uh, out of all these different AEP exams, I want to focus in on the middle grades math uh, exam. And these would be the codes to it. So it's the NT203 or the NES exam 203 exam. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you have a specific interest in this exam. Now, if you're not taking this exam, you just want to kind of see what I'm going to be doing, then that's perfectly fine. You're welcome to stay. So um, these exams, okay, a little bit back, a little bit about me. I'm a math teacher, so I know what it's like to take these particular exams. And depending on what state you're in, you're going to take various exams, right? So in Arizona, you take the AEPA series or the NES exams. If you're in other states, you very well could be taking the Praxis exams. Or if you're in California, you could be taking the CBEST or CSET. And what I found, because uh, I do test prep courses for all of these, and matter of fact, let me just say, if you're looking for an excellent comprehensive uh, math test prep review course, I'll leave the link uh, in the description of this video to my specific AEPA uh, middle grades math uh, review course for this particular exam. So you can check that out at your leisure. But most of these uh, tests um, across the different states are pretty similar. Uh, so it's no different. The bottom line is this for the middle grades math, you're going to need to know you're going to be you have to um, have a real solid understanding of high school level mathematics so you know your elementary school concepts number sense fractions arithmetic and then into your algebra concepts geometry and your statistics probability those type of things just a good you need to be well-rounded okay so meaning that if you're you know uh, if you're like you haven't seen math in a long time, even if you're good in math, if you're like, oh yeah, I'm great at math, da 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 you need to review. Even if you, listen, even if you've got a math degree, trust me, you need to go back and review. So just don't be too, like, uh, don't assume, okay, because these these tests, if you haven't taken these particular kind of type of exams, are challenging, okay? They're going to challenge you, and they're designed to be that way, and they should be, because, you know, you're taking a certification exam to teach this stuff. So, you know, nothing's going to be handed to you without you doing some due diligence. But with that being said, let's get into a particular um, uh, practice problem that I thought would be pretty cool for this level, something you would definitely want to know how to do. And so here's the problem. Okay, so here's two points on the XY plane, two ordered pairs. Okay, and what I'd like you to do is just find the slope. Okay, find the slope M of a line that passes through these two points. Okay, so we have some line, and it's going to pass through these two points on the xy plane, okay, and it's going to have a slope, right, some sort of slope. So see if you can calculate the slope, right? So um, I would encourage you to pause the video, spend a minute or two to do it, and then I'll go through and give you the answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through this. This is definitely something you would want to know how to do for this level of math in your in your preparation. This is pretty fundamental algebra stuff here. So the slope by definition is the rise over the run. Okay. And I'm doing a quick review because I don't want to turn this into a complete full lesson about slope. This is a you know more or less kind of a pop quiz to kind of see where you're at. So the rise is the change in the y's over the run is the change in the x values. So this delta y or delta x, some of you may be familiar with that, but that just means take the difference of these things. All right, I don't want to get you get, get too caught up in a terminology, but basically what this means is subtract the y's, and this down here means subtract the x's. Now where are the y's and where are the x's? Well, these guys here, right, are the y's. And these, whoops, let me use a different color. And these are the x's. Okay, so we have an ordered pair, an xy ordered pair, right? So x is first. Just think about that, right? If you probably you know know this terminology, and if you don't, you should. So this is a point on the xy plane. 
but we call this a coordinate or an ordered pair order all right there's a particular order it's a pair of things and there's a particular order order here the x information comes first then the y information comes second all right so what we're going to do so this is the x this is y this is x and this is y so to find the slope what we need to do is we're going to need to subtract the y's and then we're going to uh, subtract the x's in and, and put that in, in the denominator but here is where students or people mess up this is a very very kind of like uh, classic thing when you especially we've been teaching for many many years you see thousands of mistakes so if you listen to me you're gonna you'll not make a mistake here okay what I like to do is I'd like to draw a line under one of the pairs and I'll show you why okay so when we're calculating this let's go ahead and subtract the y's so you're saying well what do we do do we go 9 minus 1 now you're saying this is negative 1 students always mess this up they go oh nine minus one it's it's a subtract it's this is the difference it's a minus sign they're like this negative one hey i don't need that negative one because this already has this because i'm just subtracting that's totally incorrect you have to go nine minus a negative one okay so now so this is good right so i started with this y we can call this y1 and i subtract it from this y that's y2 so it's perfect. Now here is where students mess up. They're like, okay, now I'm going to subtract the x's. They'll go, okay, negative 2 minus 3. And you're like, well, there's nothing wrong with that. This is an x here, x1, and this is another x over here, x2. Here's the deal. That's incorrect. Now it's incorrect for this reason, all right? If I start with this point's information, this 9 here, if I chose that to be my first number here when I'm calculating the slope down right right here, this 9, so that's that's perfectly fine. The only deal is I need to have this coordinates information be in this slot first. In other words, because I started with the 9 here, I need to start with 3 down in a denominator. So it's going to be 3 minus a minus 2. Okay? So that is the setup. It, what, what gets students in trouble is not the basic calculations of these integers. It's understanding the concept of slope and understanding the calculations but this right here the, these two little errors these uh, minus signs this gets students all the time okay so anyways so you're gonna have uh, 9 minus a minus 1 is what 9 plus 1 over 3 minus a minus 2 and that's gonna be what 3 plus 2 so we're gonna have 9 plus 1 is 10 over 3 plus 2 is 5 so the slope is equal to 2. But if you wanted to know exactly, right, you're like, well, the, the slope is 2, but you're like, well, isn't it supposed to be a fraction, a slope, because it's a rise over 1? Yes, that's right. It's 2 over 1. So for every 1, this line runs out, it goes up 2. So that would be the slope of the line. So again, if you think about it, if you're taking this exam, you need to one be able to demonstrate that you have the knowledge to like do these you know do a basic kind of algebra calculation like this but you need to have a command of it where you can teach it and teach the subtleties of it and tell students hey this is where you're gonna make mistakes and of course this all comes through experience as well um, so you know as a fellow teacher you know this is something that you master over many years and my <laughs> best advice to you is to don't quit especially after your first year teaching people will tell you stories about how tough it is and it is tough if you stick with it it's a, it's an extremely uh, uh, rewarding career but again you're going to have to get through these exams and get your certifications first so let's go and wrap this video up now uh, again if you like my teaching style you can check out my YouTube channel. Literally, I have hundreds of videos that I do that will definitely um, help you uh, prepare for this exam. And then, if you check out the uh, description in, in this video, I'll leave the specific link to my test prep course for the uh, AEPA um, uh, middle grades math, the, this particular code here. So, you can check that out if you want to. And hey, if you like, got something out of the video, if you thought it was kind of interesting, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Okay, try to read as many comments on my videos as possible, but it's the only way I know how I'm doing. And 
you know when you have questions it gives me ideas for future videos as well but with that being said I definitely wish you all the best in your educational career um, you know my only uh, again my last piece of advice to you is to really study for these exams okay don't assume that hey just because it's elementary or middle school or it's not like you know secondary or teaching high school that it's not going to be challenging they're all challenging okay being a teacher is a profession so put in the work and um, I wish you all the best thank you for um, spending some time with me and have a great day